You're listening to the Leverage Your Incredible Factor podcast with Darnielle Jervie Harmon. If this is your first time joining me for the podcast, here's what I'd like for you to know about me. First and foremost, I am the absolute best at combining spiritual principles with business growth strategy to turn entrepreneurs into multiple six and seven figure CEOs. Second, I don't do hustle and grind. I do spirituality and systems. And you might be wondering, what in the devil is an incredible factor? And if so, I invite you to go all the way back to the very first episode of this podcast. It's aptly titled, Exactly What is the Incredible Factor? There's even a cool worksheet that I want you to do that will help you to find yours. Oh, I will likely say some things that will make you laugh, a few things that could make you cry, and definitely make you question if you are ready to leverage your incredible factor. Remember, I'm a coach, and my job is to tell you what you don't want to hear and show you what you don't want to see, all to help you to become who God created you to be. I'm so excited that you're here. This episode is powered by Breakthrough in Business. Next level everything. If you are an entrepreneur or small business owner who has had a moniker of success, yet you still feel like you haven't arrived, I bet you need a breakthrough. Learn more at breakthroughinbusinessevent.com, breakthroughinbusinessevent.com. Okay, I am so excited about this episode of the podcast. You know how you have that one episode you can't wait to do and you are waiting for the green light from God to finally do it? This is that episode. And I'm going to start by telling you a story. So I started my company in 2007. I was coming off of an extremely successful Mary Kay Cosmetics business. I had taken my Mary Kay Cosmetics consultancy from uh, 22 consultants in my unit in early 2005 to 500 consultants in my unit by mid-2006. It was a banner, 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 banner year. We won all types of awards. We became number one, most improved in the state of Delaware. Number We ended that year, that seminar year, as number five in our national area and went on to become number one the following year. But that ain't the story. So I was finishing that. I remember being at our leadership conference, which was just for sales directors at Mary Kay that January and hearing that still small voice that says, there's got to be more to life than this. Have you ever had this moment? So I was having that moment. And so I began to ponder and wonder what more, what life looked like if it were more than what I was doing at Mary Kay. I mean, I had a pink Cadillac. I, um, I had a, a banging unit, I offspring five sales directors. I mean, it was on and popping. By every stretch of the imagination, we were successful, extremely successful. And yet I still had that gnawing, nagging sensation on the inside of me that there was more, right? Have you had this moment? I've had this moment. And so then let's, let's fast forward to 2007. So 2005, 2006, top of the world. 2007, it's time to finish our second pink Cadillac. And we do finish it, but it's not nearly as easy as it was the first time. And at that point in time, I, I, I'm really now living into this feeling that there's got to be more in life. And I go so far even as to pray, as to say to God, God, there's got to be more to life than this. Will you please show me what it is? And in my dreams that night, when I went to sleep, I walked, I saw myself walking into a building that had a marquee that read Incredible One Enterprises. And while I had no idea what an Incredible One Enterprise was, I was clear that this was God showing me what it was that he had next for me. But there was only one problem. And here's where the story picks up. I did not believe that I was worthy of the image that was reflecting back to me in my dream. Can I repeat that to you? I did not believe that I was worthy of the image reflecting back to me in my dream. Now, listen, I'm a girl who has always been confident, who has, you know, put my finger on something and it turns to success. This is the girl that I am. And I'm standing flat footed in an opportunity to truly rise up and step into who 
I was created to be and my knees are knocking because I don't believe I deserve it. If you haven't figured it out by now, this particular episode of the podcast is all about raising your deserve level, but more specifically, helping you to see that you are in fact worthy. Now, I don't know how you were raised, but I was raised and went to churches as a child. I was always in and around the, the Christian faith, extremely religious at some point in times in my life and much more loosey-goosey in other points of my life. Um, and I remember the one thing that bred throughout all of this understanding of who I was and who I was raised to be was this feeling of inadequacy, this feeling of unworthiness. I remember being in church and being taught to pray, I'm not worthy. Only you are worthy, Lord. I'm not worthy, right? And it never felt good. It never sat well with me. But I did what I was told because I was a child. And who am I to question what the, the pastor, the bishop, the prelate, the whoever at the front of the church in the pulpit is telling me to do. And so I remember being a, a teenage girl and constantly feeling this feeling of inadequacy and in that I wasn't worthy, right? I remember going to college and even in all of my success, going on a full scholarship, feeling somewhere deep down inside, like I wasn't worthy. I remember coming out into adulthood and getting my first position in a bank and not questioning my salary because I didn't think I was worthy, that whatever they were giving me was what I should be okay with because it was more than I probably deserved. And I'm sure that as you're hearing it in my voice by now, you can even see how it must feel to go through life this way. This is the feeling that I have come to realize that many entrepreneurs and small business owners come into business ownership with. They come in with this feeling of inadequacy, this questioning their worthiness and their deserve level, which is why their prices are dirt low. This is why they're charging pennies for their incredible factor, right? And if you don't know what I mean, if this happens to be the very first time you're listening to an episode on the podcast, and I want you to go all the way back to the very first episode about the incredible factor so that you know what it is that I'm talking about. I think that most entrepreneurs and small business owners got this low price mentality. They got it honestly, especially if they are of, of some form or fashion the Christian faith. And I'm going to probably make some people really upset. I'm probably going to ruffle quite a few feathers, but I'm going to do it anyway. You know why? Because it's time that you realize that you are worthy and it's time that you raise your deserve level, that you start seeing at yourself for who you are. I don't have my Bible right here right now. Do I? Let me just check and make sure I'm not telling you an untruth. No, I don't have my Bible right here. Um, but I'm going to find, I'm going to, um, you might hear me typing because I'm literally doing this in the midst of this episode of the Leverage Your Incredible Factor podcast. I'm going to, to Google and I'm going to search for in the image and likeness of God. And I'm going to find out what, where that is in the Bible. All right. So that is in Genesis. 1 and 26. Now you might be saying, Darnell, you should have known that. You shouldn't have had to, had to look that one up. Um, God said, on the last day of creation, God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Genesis 1 and 26. Well, you know what that tells me, Incredible One, listening to the Leverage Your Incredible Factor podcast with Darnell Jervy Harmon. It tells me that you are worthy. It tells me that you do deserve it. It tells me that you should see yourself the way that God sees you, that he saw us at the formation of the earth. He created man in his image and likeness and said, it is good. So why in the devil are you walking around inside of a business that doesn't serve you? Why are you charging subservient rates? Why are you bending over to get clients? Why are you consistently sitting in struggle when you were created to strut in significance? Why? I'll tell you why. Because you need to raise your deserve level. And that is what I want to use the rest of this episode of the podcast to talk to you about. I want to literally give you three steps, three things 
that you need to do right now to begin to raise your deserved level. And here's the thing. I'm not jaded enough to believe that by giving you these three things, your life is going to change in an instant. But what I'm hoping happens is that it encourages you to seek additional information about who you are and whose you are. And as a result, positioning yourself to show up differently in your business. Here's what I know about you. And I don't even know you, right? I know that you are incredible because you were created in the image of and likeness of God who is incredible, right? And if in your incredibleness, you took ownership of it and, and walked into it, walked it out, the world would be a more incredible place just because of you. That's how worthy you are. That's how much you deserve. The Bible says, um, oh, I'm going to look it up for you. The length and the width, um, the length, this is a little raw, <laughs> and the width of the love of God. I forget where it is in scripture. Yes, Ephesians 3 and 18. Ephesians is one of my favorite books in the Bible. If you are questioning your deserve level, you should go to Ephesians because it'll help you to shift the, the way you see things because Ephesians talk about, talks about in 3 and 18, the dimensions of God's love. And let me, let me bring it up. This actually starts in 17 and then it goes through 19. I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to read it to you. And it's, this is King James Version. It says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. That's in the King James Version. And in, in the, intern, the NIV, it says, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, long, high, and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all of the fullness of God. And the American Standard Bible says, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all of the saints what is the breadth, length, and height, and depth. And to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled up to all of the fullness of God. I think the point I'm trying to make to you, Incredible One, is that you are worthy and you do deserve it. So let's, let's jump into those three things that need to change. Number one is you need to strengthen your foundation so that you see yourself the way God sees you. That's the first thing you have to do. The best way to do that is to go into the word of God. Now you already know, whenever I'm coming to you and I'm talking about spiritual principles and how they relate to the way you show up in your business, I am not talking about religion, but I do believe that this that your being was, was founded and created on spiritual principles at the formation of this earth, right? And I don't believe that you have to be a Christian to understand the fullness thereof of God, the creator of the abundant universe that we all get to live in every single day, right? I don't think it's laid up just for Christians, right? And I might get challenged on this and I'm, I'm fine with that if it is. And I am a person who would definitely say I subscribe to the doctrines of Christianity. I believe in Jesus. I believe that he came and died for my sins. But these principles that are in the, in the Bible are designed for you to understand the significance of your creation, right? Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. He approved you and he called you prophet, right? Before you were formed in your mother's womb. And the thing is, whether you believe it or not, this is still the truth. And so because you're here, why not be able to experience the fullness of your creation so that you might see that things show up and transpire differently inside of your business, right? See, your ability to raise your rates is going to be pontificated on your ability to see yourself as worthy. And you're only going to be able to see yourself as worthy if you consult the creator and ask him to show you your worth in his word, this love letter that he wrote to you to help you to be able to understand the magnitude of his love for you, right? And so when I think about all of the entrepreneurs, and you guys, I think, know that I work primarily with women, all of the women 
that I see, that I work with every single day that struggle with pricing themselves accordingly, I already know that if they have a pricing issue, they really have a, a deserve it level issue. It's really them questioning if they're worthy of it, right? And here's what I need you to know, right? You are priceless. Your work, however, is not. And so we have to put a price tag on it. And the price tag that we put on it has to be one that is greater than what it's going to cost you to perform the service so that you can actually get ahead in your business. But that's never going to happen if you don't get back to your foundation and begin to see yourself the way that God sees you. So that's number one. Check your foundation, see yourself the way God sees you. Again, if you need a place to go to understand how God sees you, then go, go to the book of Ephesians. It'll change your life if you let it. That's number one. The second thing that you need to do to raise your deserve level after you begin to um, see yourself the way that God sees you, or at least get an understanding of the way that God sees you. Yeah, let's make that step one. Get, a, get an understanding or foundation of the way that God sees you. The second thing you have to do is you have to get into alignment with the vision that God has for you. You have to get into alignment with the vision that God has for you. See, once you actually believe the hype that when he created you, he was showing the world what incredible looked like, once you actually believe that deep down in your soul, you are one step closer to being able to walk it out and to show up in such a way that other people will be drawn to you because of your confidence, right? I said this the other day for the very first time ever, and I love it. Confidence will close more sales than your sales mastery ever will. But you can't be confident until you see yourself the way that God sees you, until you believe, until you know that you know that you are deserving of everything that's coming your way. Now, I understand that some brainwashing is going to need to have to occur. Because if you grew up in church like I grew up in church, there was this stigma over unworthiness, right? That And, and, and don't get me wrong. I, I believe in God's grace, but I don't believe that us experiencing grace is at the sacrifice of us being undeserving. I believe that the fact that we were created in the image and likeness of God, like Genesis 1 and 26 says that we are at the beginning of the Bible is what made us worthy. Because why would God make us in his image if he didn't want us to be worthy of all that he was creating us to experience? Now, I'm not trying to suggest that it doesn't require something from us, right? It, the, the Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. So in order for you to be given, you have to do what is required. And a part of that is seeing yourself the way that God sees you and getting into alignment with the way that he sees you so that you can do the third thing, which is to take actions, to take consistent steps that demonstrate that you are walking out, that you have an understanding and a foundation and a belief that you are in fact worthy. It's all in your mind. This is why I say mindset is 95% of your success, right? 95% of your success or the lack thereof is tied to the six inches in between your ears. And you will not feel six figures in between your fingers until you feel six, until you work on the six inches in between your ears. Because raising your deserve level is bigger than even your prices, right? It's going to be what allows you to say no when the wrong client shows up. I mean, how many of you have taken on a client who wasn't worthy to be served by you, but you took them on anyway because you figured a client is better than no client? So you bent over to get a client because you were steeping in your unworthiness. Because somewhere along the way, someone told you that you weren't worthy and you bought into it instead of going to figure out why the creator of a thing created you in the first place. Because if God knew you before he formed you in your mother's womb, he already knew that you would do good. He already knew that you would come to this very moment, this crossroad experience, questioning your worth and your value and having it reflect poorly on your ability to take your business to the next level. Raising your deserve level is as much for you as it is for those that you want to serve. Because you see, you won't be able to serve the clients that you've been called to when your prices are low because you don't understand what it is that you bring to the table. And that won't happen until you go consult the creator of a thing. The biggest thing I want to stress upon you when it comes to raising your deserve level is understanding that from the moment you were thought of, you were conceived, and then you were born, you were worthy from that moment. Worthiness is not something that you have to grow into. It's something that you inherit at birth. Oh, that's good. <laughs> 
worthiness is something is not something that you have to grow into it's something that you inherit at birth you were born worthy and so my question to you incredible one is what are you going to do about it now that you know what it is you need to do to raise your deserve level which is going to have a ripple effect right because if you see yourself as worthy then you will show up differently in your business which means that you will bring on a different caliber of client and be able to usher additional transformation into the lives of those that you've been called to serve. I want you to see yourself the way God sees you. I want you to know that you know that you know that you are worthy. I want you to do work that changes lives and I want you to do it at the price point that changes your life. Did you catch that? I want you to do work that changes lives and I want you to do it at the price point that changes your life. Because see, that's why we started our own businesses. I don't know anyone, I have yet, in 13 years in business, I have yet to meet anyone who quit their good job to struggle in entrepreneurship. Everyone I know quit their good job to come into entrepreneurship, to have a business that serves them both financially and spiritually, to have more than enough, to be able to have access to the things that they used to only be able to pray about. And for those things to be afforded to them because of their business, because they're serving clients who are paying them well for what it is that they render and solving the problems that they have. That is why you are here, Incredible One. And I need you to, to step up into that. Because when you step up and raise your deserve level, then you really will position yourself to shake the planet. And there is nothing that I will want more for you than to that. You ponder on that, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you for joining me for the Leverage Your Incredible Factor Business Podcast. I'd really love to help you grow a business that funds the life you crave while doing work that shakes the planet. Get started today by applying for a discovery session with me or a member of my team at darnielle.com forward slash session. And if you enjoyed our time together, do yourself a favor, head on over to iTunes, subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Until next time, remember, you do deserve a business that funds the life you crave. Take care.